I spent the day with EK, one of Nigeria's most successful entrepreneurs. How many cars do you have in your inventory? Over 900. I am trying to build a billion dollar company. Our first goal is to have a billion worth of assets. He moved to the UK with nothing and has been able to build one of Europe's biggest luxury car rental companies. In today's video, he shares his story and shows me his plan to build a billion dollar company by renting out some of the world's most expensive supercars to people. If I was to rent that car like in a day, like the Ferrari now, how much does that Ferrari cost? Ferrari minimum charge is 2,500. Wow. Since coming into London, I would like to also touch on like the cost of living. Ooh, 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 ooh. What's it like? <laughs> it's pricey. Oh, this is Mayfair Street, yeah? Of course. Okay. Berkeley Square. Okay. Where our headquarters are. We typically have some cars out here. Not every day, but we brought some cars out here for you. Here's the Ferrari Portofino, the G63, uh, Range Rover, and the uh, Bentley Bentayga. All these cars are under your company? Of course, of course. These are the most popular in our fleet. This is my favorite. It's an easy drive. I thought I'll take you out for a drive and uh, see how we how we go. Uh, can I drive it myself? <laughs> <laughs> You okay. Try, you can try. No, 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 please. I don't want to buy markets. <laughs> I'm riding in a Ferrari today in London. I don't know if this car is for, it's for tall people like me. Uh, okay. It is actually. Weather was showing heavy rain for today. That's the thing about the UK. Oh. We actually almost just canceled having any cars outside here. Based on the weather. Yeah, because I mean, you, you were, we were not going to be filming outside, right? If it was literally was oh. heavy raining. And then I was like, you know what? Just sometimes better on yourself. The <laughs> weather will be fine for you. I've been seeing a lot of like luxury cars like around this square. This yeah, like, this is like a high, very high bar here. I mean, this is Mayfair. This is your. If you're going to compare this to Lagos, it was the central central of Ikoyi. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. What I've heard and I've seen London is pretty expensive. Like now we have a Lamborghini in front of us, <laughs> riding in a Ferrari. Yeah. So what's it like living in London? Living is, in London is the capital of the world, right? Okay. That's the way I see it. Hmm. If you're trying to get to anywhere or do business in the world, you kind of have to stop in London first. It's a beautiful city when we have good weather. That's a beautiful Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> We're all here enjoying the same city, you know? London is also very predictable, you know? You don't wake up and something's totally changed. Unlike some places. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just tell us what your company does, basically? In a nutshell, we're a global luxury car hire platform. We've been in the UK operational for the past five years. Mm. And in the past year, we've decided to go on our global journey, advancing to the US, uh, nine cities, the likes of LA, Houston, Miami. We're now operational in UAE. So the first city we've gone into is Dubai. Oh, wow, and as nice. we speak, we're advancing into Europe, into 12 cities, the likes of Rome, Milan, Oh wow. Istanbul, Paris. So the great the great cities within Europe. The idea is once we conquer each city, each tier one city, we move on to the next so that we're the number one global platform and easily accessible for luxury car hire. Oh wow. I noticed you didn't, you didn't mention Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Africa is always tricky when it comes to entrance, right? When, you, when you're trying to penetrate with a new business mm -hmm. or with a new idea or with a new concept. First places I intend to go to in Africa is Abuja. I believe there's a big culture for people who like supercars mm. and fast cars. We would also offer our chauffeur service there. But in Lagos, I'm not so sure about <laughs> offering a Ferrari. We need a little bit more space for that. <laughs> <laughs> what even inspired this business, like supercars and luxury cars? Were you always? It, it was born from a passion of enjoying, you know, the nice things in life. I used to be in a hospitality. I always rented cars myself, and it mm. just became a passion that turned into business. I believe, you know, when you, when you enjoy business or when you enjoy what you do, it, you know, most people. It's a quote that most people know. If you enjoy what you do, it doesn't become work. Yeah. I actually look forward to going to work every day, and you know, servicing our clients and making sure we deliver the best 
experience to them. You were born in Nigeria, yeah? Yes, so I was born in Nigeria. I came here when I was 14 years old. Studied here, high school, college, university. Tried applying for a few jobs, never great at interviews. I oh, wow. practical of doing the great work <laughs> that's required. Hmm. I'm good at that, but so I was never great at interviews. So I, I didn't have actually much luck when I went interviews and I just took the entrepreneurial part. I didn't start with luxury cars. I've tried mm. my hand at a few things. Okay, what, what did you start? What was one of the businesses you started? Um, hospitality. Okay. Um, I was successful at hospitality and I, you know, just decided to veer away from that as I became a little bit more mature and the drinking lifestyle was too tasking <laughs> on me as I was maturing. Yeah. So that's where I morphed into something that became uh, luxury cars. What, uh, when you say hospitality, do you mean like hotels? Club, no, 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 like club, club nights. Oh, uh, I started okay. with club nights, but I've owned my own restaurants as well. It's something I'll probably go into when I have a little bit more time. I enjoy hosting, even in my home, you know, when people visit me, we, we have a great time. So hmm. that's the hospitality aspects I enjoy as opposed to the, the operational <laughs> challenges that comes with. Can you like take me through your journey, like growing up? Cause you know, now we're showing guys luxury cars and all this luxury lifestyle, but did you come from a rich family? How did you grow up? No, not at all. My family or surname is not Sana or Tedola or uh, Dangote <laughs> or uh, Deleke. Yeah. We come from humble enough, middle class uh, family, hardworking parents who've worked hard and given us all the uh, background and foundation, good schooling, and all we need to be equipped to go out there and be successful in yeah. life. I've had to learn my ropes in business and create my own network and connections to be able to create a success. What was the like occupation of your parents? What did they used to do? Uh, my mom was a nurse. Oh, okay. uh, and my dad, believe it or not, was a politician. Oh, and, okay. and here's a bombshell for you. Okay. He got shot in church. He was assassinated. So that had an impact on me while, when I was still in university or I had just finished university. I didn't necessarily have the support of uh, my father to go into the world of uh, business. Oh, wow. So this happened when you were young? Yeah, literally just when I finished university, uh, probably about just 21 years old. What inspires you? My mother, she did a lot of business, even though she was a nurse. She used to ship containers to Nigeria. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I feel like everyone's parents has done that, but you know, she used to forcefully take me on, on the road with her. And I used to grovel about it as we all do when we get asked to do things when we are young. Yeah. But as a mature adult now, I can see how that inspired me without intention. I literally would watch her negotiate, buy items in the bulk, ship this containers, get her cash back. Young child at 15, 16. Well, I just thought this is very painful watching this, mm -hmm. but I'm sure it was laying those seeds and you know, that have manifested into, you know, the business person I am today or the business decisions that I take. You've talked about the business itself. Apart from what you mentioned as regards like one of the challenges Challenges you faced when setting up the business. Was there any other thing you faced that was like a challenge? So maybe like raising funding, or did you start with one car? Or how can you just give us that origin story? So the the advantage that we have, I mean, this is usually a challenge yeah. coming into an industry like this where you need to have ten Ferraris, ten Lamborghinis, ten Range Rovers. Yeah. The only challenge we we'll probably face is knocking on doors for suppliers to be able to deal with us because you know you explain to someone you're a new company and you want to send them thousands of pounds of business and you just think you're a time waster yeah. everybody wants to see today's money, today's money when you're trying to establish relationships so we face those challenges so we focused on ourselves we focus on marketing what we're offering to our clients mm -hmm. and with clients when you knock on door and you have clients your suppliers tend to listen so mm -hmm. that's how we managed to overcome that challenge and i'll say that's something for sure in any business when you want to start a business and you start having meetings without actually having the business mm. typically people think you're a time waster yeah. but when you have the business and you go have those meetings everybody wants a part of your part business, of business. <laughs> mm. so that's kind of like the chicken and the egg problem that's correct so how easy was it for somebody who didn't used to live in london who wasn't from london to come in here and set up business how easy is it for anybody is london a place where you can easily for one business? uk is probably the easiest place to set up a limited company you can set up a limited company in five minutes oh really yes perhaps later you'll be questioned on maybe your due diligence and yeah. send some paperwork in just to be sure of who you are behind the company but in terms of 
setting up uh, Aina Films Limited in the UK. Yeah. You can lock me down in, you know, in five minutes. Then I guess opening bank accounts, opening transactional portal, mm. things like that. Take a little bit more being ingrained in the business network, understanding how to operate or how to explain yourself when you're being asked by financial institutions, <laughs> what do you, how do you transact with your clients mm. so that you actually get the best rates or they get the best results or you know establish the best relationships. What led to the decision of you deciding, or was it like a decision that your parents made for you, deciding to leave Nigeria and come here? Oh, it was a decision my parent, my, well, my mom, my mom lived here. Yeah. Uh, my dad actually was still alive then in Nigeria and was still practicing politics. Yeah. And my mom just thought, you know, over time, her kids should be more in London and be mm. closer to her. So over time, my dad was uh, one of the people that would probably believed that the world is coming to an end in the, millenn in the millennium. People were terrified the world was going to end. This is not one of the summer movies where you can close your eyes during the scary parts. I still remember the exact date I came into the UK was the 5th of January 2000. So you have to wait a couple of days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. So maybe the first day, second day after the millennium, just checking, <laughs> just checking if the world is. And then the is by the fourth, we flew over, and I was here on the fifth of January, two thousand. So let's go into something related to Nigeria. So there's this thing happening, and I'm sure you heard about it, where a lot of Nigerians are leaving Nigeria and coming to the UK. It's okay. called Japa. Okay, <laughs> I have a lot to say on that. Okay, what do you? What are your thoughts? Because I feel like everybody wants to come here. Mostly Nigerians. The main place Nigerians travel to the most is the UK. And everybody feels like, you know, when you land here, you know, it's like the land of milk and honey, everything just opens up for you. What are, what are your, like your thoughts on the whole Japa thing? For one, there's a reverse of that. There was a Japa to Nigeria. Mm. The time I finished university here, mm -hmm. that was the same time my peers were all running. Back oh, to Nigeria. Oh, living here, going back Yes. Here? Oh, really? This was the good luck Jonathan time and the promise of everybody being able to make a lot of money in Nigeria, hmm. right? So everybody was going back. Oh, really? I saw part of myself here. I have a friend of mine who I would love to send this video to. Okay. This part makes it. Yeah, you know, she, you know for sure. she, she always laughs at me and says, my only friend who thinks is going to, who's, who's going to be a millionaire in the UK. Okay. <laughs> um, so she's always made a joke of that since when she moved to uh, Nigeria. Yeah. And obviously the circumstances of things in Nigeria have changed over that time. I mean, I finished university in 2007, 16 years now, right? So that's two presidential terms yeah. have gone past Pops. and things have thoroughly changed. Yeah. And people, I guess, who have the option of exploring other avenues of success or creating other foundations for their families have decided they can't see that path anymore. Mm. And that's why I guess Jack Ma has reversed <laughs> mm. back to the people, States yeah. or back to, you know, the UK. Yeah. And it's not everybody that has that option. And, you know, I, I for one, I find it regretful that I am not drawn to do more business in Nigeria. Hmm. Um, I have a very, very small business interest in Nigeria, hmm. not because I can't make money in Nigeria, but as I was saying to you earlier, I like the stability of the business in the UK. Someone can't come into my office today and shut down this building <laughs> or knock down this building. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. that's not a possibility here. Hmm. Just, just not. It doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, we'll probably get five years notice and I'll make plans, you know, to, you know, to protect my business again. That. And, and somebody can also come and like evict you if no. you paid your, if you have. Of course not. It's not possible. Like they're just things that would we'll struggle with operating within such an ecosystem. So I don't blame those who are jack buying back to the UK mm. because they went back to Nigeria with a promise and that promise is probably not, has not come to fruition for them. And that's why they're coming back and they see better opportunities here by all means. People are always saying when everybody leaves, who is now going to build Nigeria? Right. So, so how do you, how there's do you, someone who, who uh, debates this question with me, Debola Williams, and he's obviously a champion of Nigeria, Nigeria. of yeah. Africa. Yeah. And I, I don't have the answer, but I feel like it's in every one of us, including those who choose to stay. If you choose to be a Nigerian, to create a business in Nigeria, mm. be the example, be create the foundations. Mm. Don't be part of the problem, problem because some of us tend to be also part of the problem True. in the way we conduct ourselves in business, in politics, True. or in our family lives. So if you create a better Nigeria, 
here, if you if that's your hub, mm -hmm. then it will be more inviting to even those who decide to have created a hub elsewhere to say, you know what, there's no place like home. Mm. Let's all be back at home mm. because that's essentially where we all want to be back. Mm -hmm. So guys, I'm about to drive a Ferrari Portofino. Portofino. For the first time. <laughs> you have to say it the way the Italians say it. Portofino. Uh, uh. What do I do first? The food on the brake as usual? Yeah. Engine, start. Hold it. You, have, you have controls. Okay. Uh. <laughs> 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 Put on the brake again. Okay. You see yeah, yeah, auto. Pull your flap once. There you go. Okay, now this, you is, have... this is this is Lorenz gear. Yeah, gear one. Okay. Accelerate. Oh, I have to accelerate for it to move. Yeah. Go. <laughs> okay. Oh wow, I'm driving. Okay. Let's just pull pull up close to yeah. these guys. And this is the uh, indicator. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you did it. I did it. <laughs> this is actually my first time riding a Ferrari, thanks to you. Really? Yeah. How easy is it breaking into the market in the UK? Was it easy or was it difficult? Or how was it? I mean, we're unique in what we're doing in our space, right? I don't know there is there other global platforms doing what we do. It wasn't a market to break into. I'm trying to guess what car is that a Lamborghini? No, Aston. Aston. <laughs> um, There's so many guys in luxury, luxury <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> we're unique. unique in what we do. I feel yeah. like we have started something. There is no break in. There is no ecosystem for a platform or luxury car high and chauffeur mm. services. Okay. We are creating something special that we can take globally. So you are more like even the pioneers. We are the pioneer in our space. I think so. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. I can see like there's a barcode on this car. What, what's that for? It actually says own scam me, own me for the weekend. Oh, so if okay. you were to scam me and you know scan the barcode, you'll be able to see essentially the price of the car for the weekend and if you want to take it out for the weekend. What car is this? This is a Ferrari 48? No, Ferrari Portofino. Most recent entry level Ferrari. This uh, is entry level? Yeah, this is entry level. Ah, okay, I don't know. <laughs> so um, it's, it's easy to drive. Okay. Uh, you have seen how easily I drove her around, yeah. Yeah, around the square. It's a great car. Looking, great looking car. Hmm. And, hmm. and a car like this will cost like how much average? This is just over 200,000 pounds. So. You say just? Yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, it's like <laughs> it's light work for the people who actually enjoy these cars. You know, we're, we're here for a purpose. If you can own 10 of these cars, why own them? Make your money work for you somewhere else and uh, enjoy this car on a weekend or on a beautiful summer day. So yeah. how does it work? Because is it that, does your company own all the cars? Or no, you have I have no interest in owning them. If you gave me 10 million pounds today and told me to go buy Ferraris, I wouldn't. As we're here, we're probably gonna, you know, or tomorrow you would probably wouldn't be driving a Ferrari. You would be, yeah. you know, be in the office working yeah. Or whatever stuff you do if you have 10 million in your pocket to go buy cars so it's just not a practical scenario to mm. own a plethora of luxury or supercars some people are collectors why not you can enjoy being a collector but if you intend to own a car and enjoy daily mm. i tell you stay away from stay that because you're just not going to enjoy it daily you have mm. work to do right you had to make some you had yeah. to do something to make that, that money, money to, to car. afford the car mm. um so so um, that's interesting because yeah. many people's dream is like, oh, I want to buy a Ferrari, I want to own a private jet, you know, as Nigerians, basically, I got some for Nigerians. A lot of Nigerians have this like big dream. And after that, after you own it, that's it. <laughs> okay. So it's interesting hearing, hearing you say this. No, after, after you own it, that's it. There's, there's sometimes I have Ferraris or Lamborghinis parked outside my house. Do I get to drive them? No, because at 8 a.m. I'm in my office and some, to some days I don't leave until 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. Hmm. So when do I then get to enjoy the car? Even though there's some time to enjoy it, I'm, you know, I just want to relax at that point. <laughs> I don't want to be, driving. you know, here in a V12 or V8 or whatever it happened. <laughs> my yeah, brain has been working <laughs> overtime all day. 
it. Mm. <laughs> what was that transition process like for you? I can't say I knew what my journey was. Mm. You know, went to university. I was just hoping to be able to make money mm. <laughs> after I finished university. And, you know, I ended up landing on a passion of mine, which like, I, that's something I'm very thankful for because I know that a lot of people go to work and actually yeah. don't enjoy what they do. Yeah. Whereas I am very happy to turn up for work. If I, if I had to uh, pick a job, this would be it. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you could start your journey again and if you could do something differently, what would you do differently? Like your business, <laughs> your business journey? I would spend less money. And when I say spending money, I mean wastage. Mm. Champagne impresses you and, you know, you want to be the loudest, loudest with all the yeah. champagne in yeah. the club and all the nice cars. Today, I mean, I live in Hampstead. I am either happy to hop on the train mm. into work, which takes me, which is an 18 minute journey, or mm. sometimes I... <laughs> so so how does that, so, sorry, how does that feel like, because you, you basically have like the fanciest cars around. I love like, it. I, I honestly love it. It takes me one minute to walk from my home to the tube, and it takes me one minute to walk from the tube here in Mayfair to this office, oh. right? So for me, when I look at efficiency, I called an Uber, I think it was yesterday, and it literally said 10 minutes for an Uber to get to my house. And I just thought, in 10 minutes, I'm already halfway <laughs> to work, and I'm ready to leave my home. So for me, life is about efficiency. I'm not, I think I mentioned to you earlier, I, I'm no longer interested in vanity. I'm interested in results hmm. and just, doing things in an efficient way. Since coming into London, I think I, I would like to also touch on like the cost of living because everybody says, <laughs> what's it like? <laughs> it's pricey. <laughs> and when you compare it to cities like Monaco, where the claim to fame for Monaco is you walk on the street and you try to buy a bottle of Coke, it's 20 euros, mm -hmm. right? It might not be 20 pounds for Coke, yeah. but try breathing <laughs> in London. <laughs> <laughs> Try breathing outside your house in London. Mm. Straight away, the cost start to, to start to amount. But like I said, that again, these prices for a living is as a demand. If there was no demand, yeah, the cost would not increase. I'm sure you know there are the economical factors, inflation, yeah. interest rates growing. But the day-to-day -day man doesn't know about that. Mm. You know, there's a demand for these things, yeah. and as those demands happen, it will drive the cost up. Um, if there was no demand, then you know people who are trying to sell stuff will just reduce the reduce price. price. So <laughs> True. What, what would you say is one of the or some of the most important? Would I say rules? for success from your journey Ooh. and from where you are, where you started to where you are now. What were some of the most in, important things that you believe that? Take risk. Take risk. Take risk. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Take the risk. If you count on yourself, bet on yourself. Hmm. Like I explained to you earlier today, we almost did not even bring cars down to the office today because we usually don't have cars parked outside hmm. because we thought it was going to rain. And we thought, you know what? Have the cars out there. We'll bet that we'll bet on the, against the weather. Right and it worked out for yeah. us until 3 p.m. and it's starting <laughs> to rain. And be honest, integrity. If you say you're going to do something, you do it. And segueing back to Nigeria, I do strongly believe that we need to embody a culture of integrity hmm. in business. If you say you are going to turn up at 3 p.m., turn up at 3 p.m., everybody's time is valuable because showing up and showing up on time means a lot. If you had the chance to change one thing about Africa, what would it be? <laughs> Uh, tough question. Very tough question. Maybe not one thing. We can run on. Equal opportunities. The wealthy, the middle class, to the underprivileged, so far beyond. As opposed to comparison, the UK. You can see a someone who's underprivileged, and you literally could see them walk into this office, or you could see them walk into a restaurant, and you would not have an idea they have to go back home and you know live in a shack, as opposed to in Nigeria. Okay, you mean here yeah. in the yeah. Like I'm saying okay. here in the UK, okay. you literally can see someone who's underprivileged, yeah. who's probably homeless, yeah. but if they walk into a restaurant without looking homeless, you wouldn't tell the difference. The difference. Whereas in Nigeria, that's not even an option because okay. you can see the suffering in people's faces. So equal opportunities is what I'll hope for much more uh, in Africa if I could change it. So people actually have the opportunities to drag themselves out of the less privileged positions that they're in. And because that's everyone's goal in life. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to, some people might not even want to be as successful as a Bill Gates or yeah. Jeff Bezos but they do want to make a success of what they 
feel is a success of their life. So their life. Awesome. Where do you see your company in the next five years? Without sounding corny, I am trying to build a unicorn. A unicorn being a billion dollar, by a billion dollar company. Yeah. Our first goal in the next two years is to have a billion worth of assets in our inventory, and that's across the world globally. Awesome. And with a billion worth of assets, we could probably generate ten billion worth of sales. And on that, <laughs> and on that journey, yeah. immediately we can become a billion. A valued company. You know, you just said billion, billion, plenty, billion. <laughs> where, does, where does all this ambition come from? Because I, one thing I've learned from most of these interviews that I do, mostly Nigerians are very ambitious people. Do you think is it something that is like in your blood, or is something based on an experience that happened? Where does your ambition come from? I don't know. It's that it's in blood. I know that it's in studying people who I admire, who have. Mm sort of being successful in parallel fields. So the ambition to just continue making a success of a concept that I created out of nothing is just something that compounds me to keep going. This is like another deep question, Chef. <laughs> what do you think is the solution to actually elevating the black race, like the black, black people, Africans? Because I see a lot of, you know, people in the, like Chinese people, Indians, they build generational wealth. I love that you made that comparison. Yeah. You, before you even finish your question, I love that you made the comparison of the Indians, the Chinese building generational wealth. I will be amiss if there's anyone, black or Nigerian, who has ever said, I did not want to work with me, hmm. right? I'm always, open and I'm so joyous if I see somebody in the same space or in the same or wanting to be do some business with me mm -hmm. and they carry themselves in an integral manner and they happen to be black or they happen to be Nigerian I am so ecstatic mm -hmm. because we can understand each other better yeah. I'm glad that when we make our money together we can even enjoy it together <laughs> <laughs> I think it is the Togetherness. Don't look at your fellow black man as your competition. Mm. Um, we should practice more togetherness because togetherness is what grows our community, right? Every penny that we end up making, it would go to the right place as opposed to giving it to, I guess, the opposite race who yeah. then employ that penny back to their community. Yeah. We drove in cars today. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't ask you if I was rent that car like in a day, like the Ferrari now, how much does that Ferrari cost? a minimum charge is 2,500 pounds. Oh, that's the minimum charge if you take it for one day. <laughs> um, but you, it is, it is, a, it, it is a, we have a standard like sort of minimum rate of two days. So if you decide you want it for one day, we still charge you a minimum of two and a half thousand pounds. It's, it's worth it. How many cars do you have in your inventory in total? Over 900 at the 900 moment. Over 900, yeah, at the moment. Who would you say are like your clientele? Because 2,500 is a lot of money for like health. So there's a popular misconception. Okay. It's not a popular misconception. Some companies do have these kind of clients, do have show off clients. Yeah. But the popular misconception is everybody just hires a car when they want to show off. No, that's not the case. We have corporate clients who use our vehicles for brand campaigns. We have big companies that have used us, the likes of JD Spots. They use us whenever there's been an Anthony Joshua fight. You see our cars branded oh, with JD wow. Spots, Anthony Joshua. The likes of Kit Kat, Glastonbury uh, used us. So corporate companies like that. Then we have corporate companies who need our vehicles to get the executives from A to B. Hmm. Then you imagine yourself as a millionaire, which I'm sure you are. Um, <laughs> don't smile, don't smile, claim it and accept it. I claim it, I claim it, I claim it. Um, Amen. You imagine yourself <laughs> as a millionaire in Dubai or yeah. in the US. Yeah. You fly into the UK, yeah. you have two Lamborghinis, two Range Rovers, two, Ro two Rolls Royces, and whatever amount of cars, 30 cars in your home. When you arrive in the UK, I guarantee you, you don't want to be in a Prius, Yeah. right? True. So it is now what we call the minimum standard of living. Hmm. So we have clients who are already traveling across the globe and everywhere they stay, they just maintaining their standard of, standard living. of living. They don't, it's not a show off thing. It's just, I need a car that I'm used to that fits 
the hmm. person that I am. And those are our typical clients. Now I understand it better. It's <laughs> like the rich, rich people. That's how the rich people live. Um, so I think my final question for you is, there are so many people, Africans, who are watching this from across the globe, and they're probably inspired by your story. What would your advice be to a lot of young entrepreneurs who are probably just getting started on your journey or already on their journey? I have a popular thing, forget the logo. Go out there, make business happen. Hmm. You can create a perfect logo whenever. <laughs> uh, so that's always a start when I see someone excited. Oh, we have to make the logo. We have to make the website. Forget the logo. Forget the website. Yeah. Go out there and make the business. Hmm. When you have hundreds or thousands or possibly millions, again, it could be in an hour, it could be in pounds, it could be in dollars, coming through the door. I promise you some of the biggest companies in the world their websites are the worst. Hmm. So go out there and make your business happen. Show proof of concept. The proof is in the pudding. Then branding, marketing, and all the creative stuff that you might want to do, especially if you're not a creative, hmm. leave that to the latter part. Focus on making a success of the core of what your business is. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for an awesome interview. So guys- My pleasure. So guys, I'm going to put the links to the company in the description below. If you're ever in any of the countries, it's mentioned, if you're in London and you want to live like the 1% of the 1% and rent all these expensive cars that you've seen us driving today, just reach out to them and tell them Tyra sent you. So guys, that's all we have to share with you today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.